history. It's a great place to set a video game, because there's lots of it, and every story comes pre-built with the added weight and importance of knowing that some of it actually happened, or could have, maybe, sorta. And sometimes that means you get to meet, play, or even kick the crap out of famous real-life people who'd actually lived, and since they aren't with us anymore, you don't have to worry about them complaining about it. I'm the Game Overthinker, and these are the top 10 games starring real dead people. And before you ask, no, Custer's Revenge sure as hell ain't one of them. Number 10, Bladestorm, The Hundred Years' War. Koei Tecmo takes a shot at trying to get audiences outside Japan to care about the Dynasty Warriors games by mashing together the gameplay with real-time strategy elements and grafting it onto a super loose adaptation of The Hundred Years' War. The result was a unique and underappreciated title that didn't quite become a smash hit, but earned a loyal fan base, let gamers interact with fascinating, if interestingly interpreted, collections of real-life figures including Joan of Arc, Edward the Black Prince, Gilderai, and more. Weird doesn't begin to describe it, but sometimes weird is good. Number 9, Assassin's Creed 3, The Tyranny of King Washington. Assassin's Creed 3 excited people with a Native American main character and the chance to play in a colonial American setting stockly different from the previous two Assassin's Creed titles, but it wound up mostly feeling like more of the same, especially the storyline that many felt ignored prime opportunities to deconstruct some sacred cows of American historical mythology. The Tyranny of King Washington DLC doesn't exactly make up the difference, but it does let you battle an evil version of George Washington in a gonzo alternate timeline with magic powers, and that's pretty cool, even if the best part of the game is still driving the about. Number 8, Legends of the Diamond. It may be far from the best baseball sim on the NES, a very strong roster in and of itself, but Legends of the Diamonds was built around a killer premise. Instead of a fictional or present-day baseball stars, your available roster was culled from the sports all-time greats like Babe Ruth, Cy Young, Lou Gehrig, Whitey Ford, Ty Cobb, Willie Mays, and many, many more, programmed around their real-life career stats. How is this a concept that hasn't been revisited dozens of times since this hit in 92? Number 7, Eternal Sonata. Let's get real, if you had to work up a list of real-life figures likely to have a Japanese RPG built around them, Frederick Chopin would probably not be one of them. But imagining the legendary Polish composer envisioning a musical-themed anime dream world in which a classical JRPG hero's journey plays out broadly themed around his life and compositions is exactly the premise of this utterly bizarre but utterly charming JRPG that seemed destined from the ground up to wind up as a cult classic and ultimately, yeah, wound up as a cult classic. Number 6, Stanley, The Search for Dr. Livingston. The exploits of real-life explorer and journalist Henry Morton Stanley in Africa are the stuff that video games and adventure stories, period, are made of. Well, the, the sanitized versions, at least, since even on a seemingly generous curve of comparison to other Europeans of his era who went mucking around in Africa, the real historical Stanley comes off like a bit of an a-hole, who we really only remember because of his quintessentially dry British reaction to actually finding the missing missionary Dr. Livingston that he'd gone looking for. But sanitized or not, it's a pretty strange thing to make an 8-bit platformer out of, particularly one built around a backpack helicopter of all things, but it's an interesting and overlooked little title all the same. Number 5, Guerrilla War, aka Guevara. This game is remembered as one of the best riffs on the Akari Warriors run and gun setup, but if you only played the arcade or NES versions released in the United States, you might not have known that the unnamed Caribbean island setting was meant to be Cuba, and the commando heroes you were playing as were meant to be Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. No, really. Explicitly titled Guevara in its original Japanese release, the game painted the vanguards of the Cuban Revolution in an explicitly heroic light, something that plenty of historians, Cuban citizens, and Cuban Americans would almost certainly have some complicated feelings about. Gameplay-wise, though, it's a fascinating relic and a lot of fun to play. Number 4, Onimusha 2, Samurai's Destiny. The original Onimusha Warlords was basically Resident Evil but in feudal Japan with samurai and ninja, so of course, it ruled. Onimusha 2 brought back everything that ruled about the original and let you play as the legendary real-life samurai warrior Jubei Yagyu, one of the most famous figures of Japanese history and historical speculative fiction. Mixing old-school potions and power-ups, design sensibility with then-cutting-edge graphics and sound, the Onimusha franchise remains one of the great underappreciated series of early 21st century gaming. Number 3, Wolfenstein 3D. So, yeah, if you're doing a list of games featuring famous real-life historical figures, you're eventually gonna have to mention at least one appearance by Adolf Hitler. Thanks to gaming's unending fascination with all things World War II, this evil bastard has been in more games than some of the medium's best-loved mascot characters. Turn that one over in your brain a few times. But while Nazi killing will always be one of gaming's most noble pastimes, Wolfenstein 3D is the one that makes this list, both by being the foundational granddaddy of every FPS that came after, and because it lets you blast a Fuhrer into a puddle of goo with a giant-ass machine gun. It doesn't get much more cathartic than that. Just ask Eli Roth. Number 2. Dynasty Warriors. Koei Tecmo's Dynasty Warriors games dare to ask one of the medium's most enduring questions. What's more awesome than giant-scale military campaigns of ancient China, getting to experience those battles as an all-powerful superhuman badass who dashes around the battlefield wailing on henchmen and clashing with real-life historical figures using over-the-top attacks and crazy martial arts superpowers, all powered by an aesthetic that doesn't know the meaning of the phrase too much. While often criticized for repetitive gameplay and, well, repetitive gameplay, few deeper games allow for the kind of quick-hit catharsis that a Dynasty Warriors title delivers 
orders by letting you send a whole damn battalion flying from a single hit, then waltz into history class the next day and say, Dong Zhou? Yeah, I know Dong Zhou, I whooped that dude's ass last night. Number one, civilization. Really, what else was going to be here? Civilization lets you feel like a political power player as you direct the rise and expansion of an entire culture, but also drops a welcome element of alt-history absurdity by letting you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with often hilariously incongruent reimaginings of real-life leaders from throughout world history. In its own way, giving players the opportunity to engage in a white-knuckle nuclear standoff with a power-mad Gandhi is a quintessential example of the possibilities video games can offer, and that's why Civilization is the best game starring real dead people ever. And that's the list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Tell us about it in the comments and suggest other lists you might like to see. Remember to like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and please consider donating to the Movie Bob Patreon to support this and other series like it. Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B Chipman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest Movie Bob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, Movie Bob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future Movie Bob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another Movie Bob production.